So, hello everyone. Today I am here with our Aduco trainer, uh, Margit Holzer, who is going to be talking to us today a little bit about continuous biomanufacturing. So, hello Margit, and so my first question to you then is, um, what is continuous bioprocessing, biomanufacturing, and why do companies do it? Okay. Thanks a lot, Alex, uh, for uh, this message and for this uh, question. Yeah, continuous biomanufacturing uh, is uh, being has been developed uh, over yeah since the 80s, especially for the perfusion system in the upstream, because we had molecules that we could not produce otherwise because they were unstable, and therefore perfusion systems with a very short residence time in the upstream allowed to produce these uh, molecules. What we are doing now is to further develop uh, and uh, bring these technologies also to the downstream and to the integrated uh, manufacturing process, which on the one hand can help us uh, to reduce significantly cost because we can shrink the whole manufacturing operations, the whole space and therefore save costs. The other part is that we can also work uh, with these continuous uh, manufacturing platforms uh, um, in the time. So that means that uh, a pilot operation just by continuing the manufacturing uh, over the time allows us to produce um, material for later stage uh, clinical trials, maybe also for the manufacturing without additional scale up. And this is another uh, time saving and important parameter that we need to consider. Concerning uh, technologies, I think as well that where a lot of new technologies have been developed either for the uh, process monitoring or product monitoring. So this uh, is uh, essential for continuous processing. And uh, the other thing is also uh, the equipment side, the equipment side allowing uh, continuous processing either from the upstream, downstream and also formulation. And the third part I would mention is also the regulatory readiness uh, in terms of uh, guidelines, because we have a new guideline focusing on continuous manufacturing, which is the ICHQ 13, which just was released uh, uh, this year and becomes in operation in Europe in June. So very, very exciting time for continuous uh, manufacturing in the bio biopharmaceutical space. Brilliant. Thank you, Margaret. That's a really good intro to the um, to the topic and why companies are are doing it. it. Seems like there's a lot of reasons for them to do it. So my my next question then is, um, what is your advice? So uh, yeah, what is your advice for any company looking to implement continuous biomanufacturing? Um, yeah, what is your top maybe top three tips yeah, for, for yeah. companies? Yes. Yeah, so there are. Yeah, several parts where you could evaluate first uh, the possibility for continuous manufacturing and continuous processing. Uh, and this depends a lot on the type of molecule where you stand with your development cycle and, uh, and having also understood the potential for these uh, continuous manufacturing. Because as I mentioned, you can get a lot in terms of cost saving, time saving, uh, but there still needs to be some requirements in terms of cell line that you're working with uh, and uh, also uh, yeah, purity requirements uh, uh, and this, this needs to be evaluated case by case. Uh, so the, the best is just to look at the high level uh, depending where you stand in the development cycle and check uh, the potential and also evaluate uh, possibilities of technologies that can help you to implement this technology and this way of manufacturing. And I know that many, many companies are doing this now because they see the potential of uh, uh, continuous manufacturing. So, uh, yeah, first have the strategic 
look at your processes, your molecules, how to express them, and then uh, go more in details on the individual process step. Often companies, they have a step-by-step -step approach, uh, meaning maybe starting with upstream with the perfusion processes and then integrate the downstream, uh, maybe the capture step, and then going further also up to the formulation step. So this is what I can uh, give you as a feedback, as an answer uh, for the implementation and the strategic approach when it comes to uh, continuous manufacturing. Brilliant, thank you, Margie. And um, one final question for those organizations that are already implementing um, a continuous biomanufacturing process, what, um, you know, what are the biggest challenges they face keeping it are they maintaining that process or um, potential problems in the future? Mm -hmm. So what I see is uh, uh, as uh, the perfusion, the upstream processes, there are several ones that have been already approved. And uh, so there is the technologies to define a badge uh, or there is a quality system to define a badge, to have the traceability, to have all, also the, the qualification requirements concerning um, diversion of material if there is a deviation. So this, from the quality point of view, this reactivity and uh, the impact assessments that needs to be very close uh, to the whole organization and uh, as we are producing. So there needs to be a system in place to allow that. Uh, this is one uh, challenge and also the process characterization needs uh, this uh, residence time distribution evaluation based on different technologies. The regulators uh, do not uh, ask us to apply one methodology, but you should be available uh, um, during the uh, development to uh, uh, explain and demonstrate your control strategy. So if there is a deviation in an upstream part of your process that you can assure uh, that you have a uh, segregation um, method, a very robust one, to trace all the material that was impacted, assess the impact and assure that material without any uh, quality impacting uh, part comes to the drug substance or to the drug product level. So this is also a, a major concern. And then it's also process stability over the time so that you don't have any degradation or changes in terms of quality uh, of the product and you demonstrate it uh, as usual. Uh, it's not enough just to uh, have this statement, have these principles, but you need also to demonstrate this product and processing stability over the time. So I think these are the three main parts. There are many uh, other uh, considerations concerning software validation, concerning the equipment capability, the connection of the in individual process steps, and also qualification when it comes to uh, process characterization, where are the approaches a little bit different because we always need to think about connected uh, unit operation and continuous manufacturing lines. Brilliant. Thank you, Maggie. That's really useful. And I think that will provide some really good insights and top tips for, for those that are, are working in this space. So thank you very much, Maggie, for your help. And um, yeah, thank you everyone for listening.